What is up, YouTubians? Kuda Malo here coming at you with another exciting video. Okay, so I can't stress this enough. This video is intended for entertainment purposes only. If you gain some knowledge from it, great. I'm just sharing with you my family experience. But there are some really bad things that can happen when a person decides to make their own bread the natural way through fermentation and natural processes and etc. There's certain things that they should be looking out for, like mold, bacteria, the bad stuff. This starter that I'm making is pretty good. It's clean. It's healthy. I can tell there's no mold or bacteria or anything that is harmful or detrimental. So definitely I'm going to keep an eye on it. But let me go into some family history, how my family makes their bread. As far as I can go back into church records, my family lived well into their 90s, right? This is all from church records. And I can trace that back all the way to the 1300s, 1400s, give or take. But I would say about 80 to 85% of my family lived well into their 90s. And then I have something like 10 or 15% of my family that lived well into their hundreds, 103, 104, 105 years old. So definitely bread was a big part of their diet. And I think that played a, a part in of their longevity, how they live so long. So let's get into the process. So what made my family's bread so flavorful, so tangy, so so sour, so much and well desired by the village, right? To be able to barter and trade was the fact that they added some type of whole milk to their starter. So it could have been yogurt, right? Sheep's milk, goat's milk, or it could have been the cheese itself. Like this is kefir cheese. The the Sicilian family that I, that I grew up in basically kind of had something similar, but this is like a more modern take on it. But basically what's going on is the bacteria that's in the whole milk is what's giving the starter its flavor, right? This is, this is my family's we're talking generations and generations of doing it this way, but it's the bacteria, the lactobacillus and all the strains that are in that yogurt or that whole milk, sheep's milk, goat's milk that are giving the starter and eventually the bread, the flavor. It's the fermentation process of the whole grains, right? That makes the bread more easily digestible by the body. And it's, it's that fermentation process also that helps to unlock the nutrients that are in the bran, of the whole wheat. So you have the bran on the outside. That's where the vitamins and the minerals are. Then you have the endosperm and then you have the germ that's all the way inside. And basically they would use stone ground whole wheat flour, whether it was like more recently it would be durum, durum semolina or whatever grains they had way back when in the medieval times or whatever. But anyways, the whole way the, the whole way that the process started was it, it, it was over the course of a few days. And what would happen is, is they would get a container, right? So more modern would be glass, more back in history would be like a clay container of some kind. And what they would do is they would, they would put in a tablespoon of the whole milk, sheep's milk, goat's milk into the container. And that first tablespoon had enough bacteria to carry through the rest of the process. So once they added that first tablespoon, they didn't have to add any more. And then what they would do is they would add equal parts of water and flour and then continue adding equal parts of water and flour every day for about three or four days. So what's going on during that process of the three or four days is that the natural yeast that's in the environment would go and feed off of the whole, the whole grains, right? The wheat and the flour that's in this starter mix. And that, that's starting the fermentation process while at the same time, the bacteria level is growing, kind of like a dimmer switch. The longer they let it sit in a cold, dark place, the more the bacteria level gave good flavor to their starter. And the more fermentation, the more stronger the starter got and the yeast build up their strength, the longer the process went. So when it came time to make the bread... They would, they would obviously reach a certain level in the container. They would say, okay, it's time to make the bread. So then they would mix, again, equal parts of flour, the, the stone ground, whole wheat grain flour that they had, and water. And it was something like maybe a 70% hydration or something like that. And they would put their dough, they would knead the dough and do whatever, and then stick that in a container and then put that into a cold, right, dry dark place and let that sit for, for a couple days at least, like at least two days. So during that 48 hour process, what's happening is, is the yeast 
is feeding off of the flour, right? Releasing gas, carbon dioxide, and that's what's making the dough rise. And then the bacteria is growing as well. And the bacteria is what's giving the final dough its flavor. And then they would bake it off and they would, they would make enough for themselves, for their family, obviously. And then they would make enough for the neighbors so they could barter and trade and do whatever they had to do. So then in terms of bread in their diet, what they were getting was, is they were getting sometimes bread in the morning. Let's say they had it for breakfast. They would do like a cup of milk, like sheep's milk, goat's milk. And then they might have a piece of bread with maybe a, a little bit of butter or whatever. That was maybe more recent times. If they had bread for lunch, typically what would happen is, is they would make pasta from whole wheat flour as the first course. And then the second course would be some kind of a meat dish, right? Or some kind of a protein dish because... You have to remember if there's female sheep and female goats that are making milk, the male goats and the male sheep are being raised for food, right? To be, to be roasted, to be barbecued, you know, whatever it was, or like in the case of, in the case of like pig, it was prosciutto, salami, sausage, you know, these cured meats and that kind of stuff. So they would have a piece of bread with these cured meats, or they would have a piece of bread with whatever they had roasted, roasted chicken, roasted, roasted veal, roasted lamb, roasted whatever, right? If they had bread for dinner time, typically it was bread and cheese, right? Before the main dinner, whatever, whatever leftovers were from lunch is usually what they had for dinner. And they would do a piece of bread with maybe some of these cured meats or cured sardines. Anyways, you get the idea. But I think it's this, this whole process of the good bacteria, the lactobacillus, that's in the bread, giving it the flavor and the tang, and also the process of fermentation, unlocking the, the nutrients that were in the bran, the magnesium and the zinc, that made it such a nutrient-dense bread. And I think that's part of what contributed to their longevity. So how do we update the process? How do we modernize the process? What I've been doing is I've been using whole milk kefir cheese, right? This is real California milk. And the benefits of this are just insane. If you look on the label, right, you're getting milk from cows not treated with RBST, and you're also getting the live and probiotic cultures, right? Flavor, flavor, flavor. So what's going on here is there's live and active yogurt and probiotics, right? There's cultures, there's thermophilus, there's bulgaricus. The bulgaricus is basically the Bulgarian strain of lactobacillus that's supposed to be more hearty, more flavorful. If somebody has a comment down below, go ahead and make your comments about that. I think it's one of the best types of lactobacillus you can possibly get. Then there's the lactus, the cassell, acidophilus is also in here. And there's also, however you pronounce that, bifidobacterium. Is that how you would say that? Anyways, good, healthy bacteria is going into my starter. And then... The whole wheat that I use is this atta flour, A-T-T-A, -T -T which is typically used to make pita or unleavened bread. Uh, and it's great. It's a very coarse, good whole wheat flour, right? It's grainy. You can see some of the bran that's still in there, but it, it feels good in the, in the when you're making it in the dough. And it's great stuff. I try to get the whole wheat flour as much as possible. I be, I'm going to start experimenting with sprouted whole wheat, so that'll be in another future video. But what I do is I mix the tablespoon of the kefir cheese, right? Sometimes I do it with yogurt, but I do the a tablespoon of the kefir cheese the first day. And then I put equal parts of the flour and the water in here. And I keep an eye on it. It's right now it's the texture of like a hummus, right? If that's how I had to explain it, you know, it's got kind of like a thick, like a thick pasty kind of feel. So it's not runny at all. It's just very thick. And this will sit overnight. Sometimes I do it in the fridge. Sometimes I do it on the countertop. It just depends. But I will watch this like a hawk because I want to make sure I'm not getting any bad bacteria that's, that's going to happen or any mold or any of that kind of stuff. It's a very important part of the process is to watch it, make sure it looks as healthy as it does right now. I mean, that's pretty healthy to me. It kind of has the consistency and the color of, like I said, of like a hummus, right? So then after... You know, this first 24 hour cycle, I don't have to add the yogurt anymore. What I will add is just equal parts of water and flour, something like maybe two tablespoons of flour, two tablespoons of water. And I'll do that for a few days until 
I get to this level. When I get to this level, what will happen is, is usually by then it'll double in size overnight. And then the next day I'll start making the bread. So that's how I do it. <clears throat> Anyways, down in the description there down below, there's some links to some pretty cool products. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm really trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of this month. Text this to your buddies, your friends, tweet this, do whatever you got to do. Share it on TikTok, Instagram. I'm really trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of this month. So make sure to subscribe and share the video. Hit the notification bell if you want to keep abreast of more exciting videos like this. Down in the description, there's also a link to Cooter Malloy product reviews. Make sure to check out that Facebook page. Give me a like and a subscribe on there as well. And like I said, down in the description, there's some links to some pretty cool products if you want to check those out. Hopefully we all live to 100 <laughs> eating great fresh sourdough bread <laughs> as part of our diets. And uh, hopefully I will catch you all in the next video.